Shalom, all praises, blessings, glories, and honors to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. Double honors to my elder apostles and bishop elders of Great Millstone who have taught me this truth as well of men of like mind. Shalom wa chasad, which means peace and mercy to the elect of the nation of Israel, whom are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native American Indians, and Israelite foreigners of the sea line of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob whom are scattered here in America, which is Babylon the Great and abroad. To you I say Shalom and Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Rataza. This lesson is edifying and informative. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Verse 8 a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. In the news from the RT, U.S. barely ahead of Russia in military strength report. The Global Firepower Index for 2023 is based on a secret formula and open source intelligence. Russia is right behind the U.S. in military strength, with China rapidly catching up. Now why and how has China been rapidly catching up to the U.S. in regards to military might, military strength, with Russia being right behind? Let's find out. Joel, chapter 3 verse 9 proclaim ye this among the gentiles among the heathen nations prepare war so the proclamation of war and the preparation thereof is being declared amongst the heathen nations through the mouth of the prophets of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai because we are in the season of war wake up the mighty men that all the men of war draw near draw near where draw near the valley of Jehoshaphat which in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shapat which means Yahweh's judgment which is located in the Arabian Peninsula that is surrounded by the Arabian Sea which is the Middle East where the Battle of Omar Geddon which means mountain of troops government of troops will be fought during the Third World's War which according to the book of Revelation chapter 11 verse 14 cometh quickly let them come up and this is the point this is how China has been catching up to the US in military might beat your plowshares into swords and your puna hooks into spears now plowshares and puna hooks are instruments of agriculture whereas swords and spears are instruments of cruelty plowshares and pruning hooks which are instruments of agriculture represents a nation's economic wealth and so these different nations including the US Russia China India Iran and so on and so forth have been taking the economic wealth and using them towards the research development and enhancements slash optimization slash modifications of weapons of mass destruction 
including ICBM nuclear missiles, which, according to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 25, are the weapons of the Lord's indignation. And that is how these nations, including China, has been advancing their military might and increasing their military stockpiles because these nations are preparing for war. And what war? Again, the third world's woe, which, according to the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 14, cometh quickly. Let the weak say, weak nations such as North Korea, India, Iran, so on and so forth, are now saying that they are strong because now they possess certain military technology. Okay, really. North Korea and Iran because India has always possessed uh, nuclear capability so really I'd, I meant to say North Korea and Iran because North Korea and Iran are the two uh, latest powers to get their hands on nuclear capabilities okay and so now let's go back to the oracle. Now we understand how China has been rapidly catching up. Because according to the scriptures, they are beating their plowshares into swords and their pruning hooks into spears in preparation for war. For we are in the season of war. Hence the reason why you have been hearing of wars and rumors of wars. The Global Firepower GFP website set in its 2023 rankings report released this week. GFP has been producing the annual report since 2006, ranking 145 countries around the world by potential war-making capability across land, sea, and air fought by conventional means. And we know and understand that nations such as the US, Russia, and China, the three leading superpowers of this current world, all possess lethal land, sea, and air capabilities to conventional means the in-house formula considers manpower equipment natural resources finances and geography represented by 60 plus individual factors to arrive at an index with zero being the theoretical perfect score in other words an index of zero is basically a high mark or a high score which means that any country that receives an index of zero possess potential war making capabilities across land sea and air fought by conventional means with manpower equipment natural resources finances and good geography these factors contribute to a perfect theoretical uh, index of zero the u.s leads the world technologically and is advanced in key medical aerospace and computer slash telecom sectors according to gfp which assigned Washington an index of 0 0.0712, roughly 0.1%, 0 .0, roughly. It also has a certain degree of self-sustainment while displaying commanding numbers in key material, financial, and resource categories. Factored into GFP's calculations for the size of the Pentagon budget, 
over 750 billion, which is roughly a trillion dollars, more than triple that of China, the U.S. Navy's carrier fleet and the size of the U.S. Air Force. GFP claims that the Ukraine conflict has showcased key limitations in the Russian military capabilities in terms of preparedness, leadership, training, and supply issues, admitting that it has relied on open source intelligence to estimate Russian combat losses. Even so, the outfit assigned Russia a score of 0.0714 for just 0.0002 below the U.S. Why? Because Russia currently leads the world in nuclear arms. They possess the most nuclear missiles. China came in at third place with a power index score of 0.0722, but continues its climb to the number two spot owned by, for some time, excuse me, by regional powerhouse Russia, according to GFP. Russia is referred to as the Medes in the book of Isaiah and Gog and Magog in the book of Ezekiel, the 38th chapter. India was fought, excuse me, India was fourth with a score of 0 0.1025, followed by the UK in fifth place at 0 0.1435. London's ranking seemed to be influenced in part by the two Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers in Royal Navy service. Global firepower rankings showed France 9th behind Japan 8th, Italy 10th ahead of Turkey 11th, and Iran 17th place ahead of Israel 18th. Poland was supposedly 20th ahead of Germany in 25th place. Ukraine ranked 15th up from 16th place in 2022. As a result of its response to the conflict, financial and material backing from the West. It had a score of 0 0.2516 as of May the 31st and its armor, artillery and aircraft numbers were based entirely on estimates. Global firepowers, location, funding and ownership aren't entirely clear. The outfit does not assume responsibility as to the accuracy, correctness completeness, reliability, and up-to-dateness of information made available throughout excuse me yeah, throughout per its own disclaimer this concludes the article and so this article in summary gives us information and understanding on which particular nations lead the globe in firepower uh, the true leaders are the US Russia China among many others and how these nations have been only increasing their military might over the uh, past decades right now in other news this concludes the article again in other news from the uh, I believe this is the uh, CNN right CNN Saudi Arabia you AE and Iran among six countries invited to join BRICS group which this is big news because obviously the US will not be happy about this obviously the US will not want Iran especially to join the BRICS and if the Saudis do join the BRICS that will only hurt uh, the US even more as well all powers, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, have been invited to become members of the BRICS group of developing nations in its first expansion in over a decade. Also invited are Iran. Iran in Ezekiel 38 is Persia. Remember that Russia, Gog and Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, Meshach and Tubal represents Turkey. Okay. Gomer and Togomer also are a part of Turkey. Okay, and they're north quarters. Russia will become a guard unto Iran, unto the Persians. Egypt, okay, that's also another country that Russia is going to become a guard unto, be a guard unto. Okay, Lydia, Ethiopia. It says Ethiopia and Argentina, South African President Cyril Ram Ara 
Mapusa said Thursday as he wrapped of the annual summit of the group in Johannesburg. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Fasel bin Farah said the kingdom was awaiting details from the BRICS group on the nature of the membership and would take an appropriate decision accordingly. All six nations or countries, same thing rather, invited had already expressed an interest in joining. The BRICS group currently includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. The membership will take effect on the 1st of January 2024, presidential uh, election year here in the U.S. It says, Ram Ara Maposa said, In a video message, Russian President Vladimir Putin congratulated the new BRICS members adding that the bloc's global influence will continue to grow. I would like to congratulate the new members who will work in a full-scale format next year, Putin said. And I would like to assure all our colleagues that we will continue to work, that continue the work, excuse me, that we started today on expanding the influence of BRICS in the world. The Russian president added, China's President Xi Jinping called the bloc's expansion historic reflecting its determination to unite and cooperate with developing countries. It will inject new impulses into the BRICS cooperation mechanism and further strengthen the power of world peace and development, Xi Jinping said. India Prime Minister Narendra Modi also welcomed the expansion, saying his country had always believed that adding new members would strengthen the bloc. Speaking to Saudi TV channel al Arabia, the Saudi foreign minister added that the bloc had proven itself to be a useful and important channel to strengthen economic cooperation with countries of the so-called Global South. Bin Farah told the BRICS conference earlier Thursday that the kingdom would continue to be a secure and reliable energy provider, adding that total bilateral trade between Saudi Arabia and BRICS nations exceeded $160 billion in 2022. An anti or anti Western bloc, excuse me. Now, I'm not going to read all this. I will leave the uh, article, the link of the article, excuse me, in the uh, description box of the lesson. And you, brothers and few sisters, can read it at your leisure. Finally, this is from the Press TV. President Rassi benefits of Iran's membership in BRICS historic. So. Get ready to see a lot of interesting things happen as we approach the end of the year. Iran may very well join BRICS as well as the Saudis. Iranian President Ibrahim Rassi says the country offers unique opportunities for member states of the BRICS group of emerging economies in the field of trade, energy, and transit. This is just an add-on to the previous article that I just read to further give us some more insight uh, concerning Iran. It says, Addressing the Friends of BRICS Summit in Johannesburg on Thursday, Raisi touched on the BRICS decision to admit new members to the bloc, stressing that the move will pave the way for global development on the basis of justice. The benefits of the Islamic Republic of Iran's membership in BRICS will be surely historic. It will open up a new chapter and constitute a new step in the direction of promoting justice equality, ethics, and sustainable peace worldwide, President Rassi said. He emphasized that maximum interaction and promotion of multilateral cooperation mechanisms, especially with independent and developing countries, is at the core of Iran's foreign policy. Due to its unique transit location, extensive energy resources, as well as high low levels of expertise in various fields, namely industrial production as well as nano and medical technologies, we declare our readiness for cooperation, joint economic projects, and investments with BRICS member states, Rasi said. The Iranian president praised South Africa, which has hosted the summit of the BRICS countries three times and devoted serious efforts to strengthen cooperation and economic partnership within the bloc and among other nations. The African continent is among the main capitals of the world. Its rich culture and ethnic diversity along with beautiful natural landscapes and rich mineral resources have characterized the continent. Fortunately, the political and social 
credence of Africa is increasing day by day, Rasi said. He stressed that an important part of the international community's future is taking shape in this geographical part of the world. The Iranian president also attributed to the late South African anti apartheid activist and political Nelson Mandela, Mandela excuse me, and other African heroes who stood up against colonialism. The Islamic Republic of Iran has been an ally of Africa for a long time. Enhancements of economic cooperation with African countries have been long on our agenda. We pursue special agendas of cooperation in our bilateral and multinational ties with different African countries, Rasi said. Hegemony, injustice, discrimination, and moral dependency have put the world in a difficult and complicated situation, he added. And this is just uh, a, a, a shot. <laughs> we know that this is a shot at the U.S. Okay? The emergence and spread of problems such as hunger and climate change, lack of access to health care and medical service, cyber, cyber insecurity, along with trust to cultivate values and, and identities are among the challenges that require efforts and convergence in order to deepen the discourse of justice and found a just system on the basis of common interest rights, he said. He went on to describe BRICS as a symbol of change and transformation of global relations, which can help solve the problems of the international community, especially as global confidence in its efficiency is increasing. And I will conclude here. I'll be right to say this has been another in the news. And, um, hey man, things are heating up. So let's keep an eye out. Keep watching and see how the Lord is going to continue to work and work in the minds of these different leaders across the globe to further advance uh, us towards biblical prophecy. So with that, I say shalom to the elect. This has been another in the news.